This is the DJ Henderson Podcast. Today's guest is a Toronto Canada native who, after having a breakout freshman year at Santa Fe College, is now one of the nation's top JUCO basketball prospects. My teammate. Yao Bing Mensa, welcome to the show, bro. Yes, sir. Young boy, y'all in the building, you feel me? My guy. Talk mm-hmm. to me about where you're from, all that, where, where you're from. All right, so I'm from Toronto, Ontario. Also, I'm from Ghana, West Africa. And I cross, so um, in Toronto, it's like a really enough, like a rough neighborhood where I'm from. Um, a lot of killings, shootings, all that, you can name it. It's been there and that. But I'm proud to be from that neighborhood because I grew up since I was a little kid and like, I just love the neighborhood. The people there are just fun, amazing. I just love it. The older people in your neighborhood always kind of like look out for you because they saw that you had something going for yourself in basketball, stuff like that. Yeah, when I was back in middle school, I had a couple like older people saying that, like, you know, take care, don't be in the streets, like make sure from school, go home. Like, in some potential me that like I could go far in life with basketball. What to in your from your perspective, what is basketball like in Canada now? Because I remember, I mean, we're about the same age, but when I first started playing basketball, Canada wasn't really like too much of anything in regards to basketball. Like all all I knew about Canadian or Canada and basketball was like Steve Nash, uh, guys like that. But like as time went on, like we started to see guys like. Jamal Murray, R.J. Barrett, uh, Nikhil Alexander, Walker, Shy Alexander, like Shy Gilders Alexander, like talk to me about basketball in Canada, how it's grown over the years, basically right. Uh, okay, so well, back in like when I was in like the ninth grade, basketball was like it was totally different. Like we didn't have youngins like the way they are right now, just dunking and layup lines. Like it's crazy what's happening right now, and like I was evolving as well because like basketball right now, like kids are really like tall like six foot seven six eight at the age of like what 14 15 so like back then that was never really like that but as of right now like basketball has really evolved like in Canada because all these kids are just like they're growing I'm like their basketball skills are amazing and like it's just just impressive really I mean when like like I was saying a couple years ago I mean, I'm not from Canada, so I can't really speak on it directly but like just from seeing it I like I would always see the good players in Canada, like every time they're coming to America because they want to get more exposure, play better players. But I mean, still not to this day, it's still the same, but I think it's probably less now because there's more and more good players coming up in Canada. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, I, I agree. Like to me, I felt like back then, I felt like if you didn't go to America, there's no way. That's there's no way you're making it to league. Like you have zero chance. But the way, like, life is right now, like, it, at this point, it really doesn't matter where you play because there's people in Canada, like, where I'm from, they're getting looks, not even in America. So, like, stuff like that, it just, it just amazed me as to how they're taking, like, a look at how Canadian basketball is because, Canadian, like, Canadians were really like that. Like, we can hoop, like, just like Americans too. So, I'm really glad for all that stuff. How did you start playing basketball? Um, when I was a, when I was a little kid, at first, I'm gonna be honest, at first I didn't play basketball at all. I was a soccer okay. head, like, my brothers, my family, I mean, my family were literally just soccer, literally soccer. So, when I touched, my dad gave me the ball, like, what, four or five? And I was like, I didn't really pay attention to it because I was like, okay, what is this, bro? Like, I'm not really interested in this. So, I just said, okay, forget it. Let me just play soccer. And then... After when I played soccer a little bit, I just realized I was definitely not good at soccer. So I'm like, let me just find a different sport. So I went back to the same basketball my dad gave me. Went to hoops. My, my dad took me to hoops, shot some hoops, and I was just like, okay, I can do something with this in the future. So after that day, I just knew like I could do something with it. What was your AAU experience like? AAU experience? Um, it was good, honestly. I, I had a really good experience. Cause I went there my uh I went there only one time back in like I think the tenth or eleventh grade for AU. Like a lot of competition back back there. Like I was in the UA um UA circuit. I think I played in the Adidas circuit and just those two circuits alone, a lot of good competition, honestly. Great exposure. But 
I mean, I think that kind of shows the difference in like American basketball and Canadian basketball. Like you said, you mentioned AAU. When I said, how's your AAU experience? You said you just went off the rip to 10th grade. And I've been playing AAU ball since like fourth grade, fifth grade. Maybe not like it wasn't obviously at fourth, fifth grade, sixth grade, that age, it wasn't the same. Like it wasn't as competitive as being on the UA circuit or Adidas circuit, but there was some kind of like AAU basketball situation here. I understand that. Um, who are some like, who are some good players that you play with and against during your AAU times? Um, some good players. I played with Andrew Nemar. He was on my team back in like 10th grade, I think. Um, I played against RJ Barrett when I was in the eighth grade. That was my first time on an AU team. Well, I haven't went, I haven't traveled the circuit because I wasn't allowed <laughs> by parents. So I played against RJ, um, played against Don Maker. I don't know how, I don't know how I played against him. It was uh, back in the gym where I used to work out at because we had an older, like older people team. So Don Maker was on the squad and like we played scrimmage against them and then I mean, you don't want to hear the end result because they yeah, didn't. You already know how that went. Well, the good players I played with was definitely uh, Angie Numhard. I could shout out my boys back in Canada, like Giovanni, Showtime, David, Lele. I can, shout, I can name all, but. Shout out all the guys. Yeah. So where did you go to high school? And what was it like? What was your high school experience like? So in Toronto, I went to a high school called Emory Collegiate and went there for four years. And that experience was, it taught me a lot as to where I can go in basketball. Because back in the ninth grade, I I could say I was good, but I wasn't that good. Like, I was really, like, literally just a shooter. Just that, I'll just run to the corner, shoot the ball, just like some Ray Allen type. But after the ninth grade and, and I went into the tenth grade, I realized that um, I had to take over the team because it was like a junior team. And I was like more like a sophomore, whatever you guys call it. But I had to take over the team with me and my boys. So that year really showed me that I can go somewhere in basketball because I really improved my game, not just like not just shooting alone in the corner, but taking it to the rim, handling the ball, passing my teammates, just doing all the extra stuff that I need to help my team win, for sure. So the high school appearance was definitely fun. Describe your game to somebody that has never seen you play currently. Uh, well, first off, I would describe my game as like, I really like, hmm, I'll say, I play defense. I like to run, definitely. Because if you're guarding me, I'm going to give you help because I love running up and down the court. And I, you can see I don't get tired. So I like running, playing defense, love grabbing rebounds. I love jumping, like getting a dunk. I love putting on a show for my fans out there. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a hustler. I'm a good teammate, honestly. I, my teammates tell me I'm a good teammate. I don't argue and all that stuff make sure my team wins for sure and definitely i could just do it like everything but you know i think that's pretty accurate definitely a good teammate for sure for sure yeah. first and foremost you go by young boy Yao. where does the young boy mentality come from and where did that where did it all come from okay so i could say back in the 10th grade i watched um an nba player he's an nba player right now called Kyle sexton so when I first watched him, I saw his mentality and I was like, wow, this kid is really like, really good. Like he's a hot head, like he'll get into anybody's skin. And that kind of mentality I love for sure. Because like, if you, if you play like, okay, excuse my language, if you play like a, nobody's really good at it. Everybody's gonna kill you. But you gotta have that dog mentality to play because that's all the game of basketball. You need that dog mentality to go far for sure. So that, that's where I got young bull from. And then after those years, I started calling myself Young Bull. People started calling me Young Bull because of the mentality, for sure. So that's how I got my name, Young Bull. When you were in, like, high school or growing up, who did you watch and try to, like, model your game after or take different parts of their game and, like, try to put fit it into yours? Um, I definitely watched a lot of Kobe Bryant and Kevin Durant highlights, for sure. Like, the way those guys play is just – just amazing because Kobe Bryant could literally do it all for sure. Defense, shoot, fade away, like you just name it. Like uh, he's my favorite player. So like, that's definitely my idol for sure. Kevin Durant, seven foot point guard, nothing you could do about it. He's, he's just like me. Like I'm that type of player, but 
he's just really different. So I try to model my game a lot from Kevin Durant and Kobe Bryant for sure. If you could tell yourself one thing, like as a freshman, if you could go back to your freshman year and tell yourself one thing, what would you tell yourself? Should have played harder. Play harder. Should have played harder for sure. The reason why I'm saying that is because my freshman year, I did play hard, honestly. But there are a couple of times in games I would down myself because like I wasn't having a good game or something else. So I'll definitely down myself and I'll, I'll just not play hard for sure. But definitely, if I could go back to my freshman year, I'll definitely tell myself every game play hard. I think as a young, like as a young player, I mean, like once you start to take it serious and once you see that you're like progressing, like possibly going somewhere, like possibly to college or whatever the case, like playing hard becomes like something that you just have to do. Like I remember when I was younger, I thought I was like playing hard. But then when I got to high school, my coach, like he was always just always on top of me, on top of me, on top of me. And I never mm. understood like what it meant to actually play hard. Like I, I understood how to play and all that stuff. But like once you learn how to play hard, I think a lot of things take care of itself on the court. And that's what a lot of like, that's what coaches like. That's what scouts like. That's what people like to see somebody that plays hard all the time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. What made you decide on going the JUCO route? Um, after my prep year, I really didn't have a choice because I realized that I was missing a couple of classes that I didn't know I had to take for high school. So I had no choice but to go to the Juco route. But I, my mindset was definitely to go D1 because like, everybody wants to go D1 for sure. Like I didn't have that mindset on the Juco. Cause I, know, I didn't know anything about Juco. But um, not having the right classes, definitely, like, I had no choice but to go to that JUCO route, honestly. So when you got here, you were just mostly focused on making it to the next level, really? Yeah, yeah making it to the next level for sure, because my mindset is always about moving forward. I'm never moving back, because I don't love that mindset, honestly. What was your freshman season like? Uh, freshman season, it was all right. Honestly, I could have done better for sure. Everybody's learning. But my freshman season, like, I did, I did all right, honestly. Like, I could be, I'm the average 11 points, six rebounds per game. It was, it was all right, honestly. It was, it was a good experience. What, like, a lot of people don't, they don't understand the difference between, like, Juco ball and, like the stuff that they see on TV, like D1, D2, whatever the case, NBA, whatever the case. Talk to me about like how how hard the grind is as a JUCO player and like what it's taking for you to get your name out there and become such a highly touted player that you've become over the past year. Um, Honestly, you're right. Honestly, these people, don't, they don't understand about how hard you have to work in JUCO because everybody, everyone in JUCO, the people like outside of JUCO, they'll look at you like, Okay, this, he's not all that, obviously. But when you come to JUCO, you definitely have to work. There's no slacking, none of that. You definitely got to work for when you're trying to do for the next level because definitely JUCO ball is, is really hard, honestly. If you're trying to get to the next level, I advise like everybody to take the JUCO route for sure because it will definitely prepare you for the next level, honestly, because those dudes on the next level are big, tough, physical. And it's just like JUCO basketball too. Big, tough, physical, so... Honestly, the Juco experience is really it's really tough, but honestly, you have a lot of fun for sure, for sure. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people, they'll see a player or I'm sure even you, like they saw you, me, myself also, we go to the same school. So, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there is like, oh, he goes to Santa Fe or he's at a junior mm -hmm. college. His friends are playing here or other people that are – there's other people playing at different levels, higher levels, but – a lot of people don't understand that it's actually like a lot of great basketball players at Juco. Like you said, you're a for sure a division one talent in my eyes, but you had to get your grades right. There's a lot of guys that are in Juco for different reasons, but I think people definitely underestimate like the amount of talent, the toughness, the physicality, just the grind off the court, yeah. like everything. Talk to me about off the court. Like what's different about Juco than a lot of like higher level schools? Um, off the court, we definitely lift a whole lot because we're trying to get stronger for the next level. 
off the court, we got a bunch of homework to do. It's very tiring. Get back, we shower, homework, got to sleep. No time for like, no time, barely time for any video games and stuff like that. Maybe now because we're in quarantine and stuff, but back then, like last year, we barely had any time to play video games because all our busy schedule. And it's, it's definitely different, honestly, off the court. But off the court, we get to chill with our teammates. It's, it's pretty fun, honestly. Yeah, I think I think we as as a junior college players like we have less access to like pretty much everything like you like we're in Gainesville so like just for example University of Florida like a basketball player at the University of Florida they're eating very like a lot better than we are their pro- their living conditions might be better than our they probably get treated a little better because they're like more known that kind of thing they have better better resources better better everything honestly but I think like the bond that you build through these tough times with your teammates is like pretty much priceless like to me I don't think there's a price on the experiences I've had and the guys and the teammates that I've had all the relationships I've built so far since I've been here last year you went from coming off the bench not being a starter to being basically like a top player on our team what was that like last year filling that role filling that role really meant a lot to me Honestly, when I came to Santa Fe, um, I didn't really think I was going to sit on the bench, like, majority of my first uh, my first couple games. Because I, I knew that, honestly, I can start and definitely help my team out, get a win. But coming off the bench really taught me a lot, honestly. Because when you're coming off the bench, you got to show, you got to showcase your skills. And tell, basically, you're basically telling your coach that, coach, next game, you got to start me, blah, 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 blah. And me picking up that role really showed me as to how I can definitely impact the next one I'm going to next year for sure. And basically, right now, being the top player on the team, um, that leader roleship, um, definitely, it's definitely an amazing like, role because I can definitely talk to my teammates, tell them, oh, do this and that. Cause just because I'm a good teammate, I'd love to help my teammate. And this year, I'm definitely trying to get this win and definitely get a championship for sure. For sure. You kind of touched on it, but talk to me about how having a big year last year, like, put you on the radar for this year and opened up your recruitment and everything else. Well, last year, it was definitely, definitely a big year for me. And just as a freshman, it's really opened a lot of eyes to a couple of D1 coaches because I have a couple of D1 interests and stuff like that. So, honestly... As of right now, I, I know people are going to, like, talk about, oh, y'all bang this, y'all bang that, but I don't really mind all of that. Honestly, I'm focused this year, focused on definitely getting my team the the chip, and definitely I'll think about all the other stuff later. That's exactly what I was about to get to. Like, how has, like, you've you've made yourself a top a top recruit in the country as far as junior college and college basketball. So how have you – stayed focused and like stayed on track even though you've been hearing seeing all of this like noise behind your name well for me honestly um with all these people talking and stuff that doesn't mean anything to me because when i go on twitter and stuff i see all of these other juco players getting offers by schools that you know are looking at me that i didn't get offered yet and like stuff like that like i don't really care because I know my game for sure. People, the people around me know my game for sure. I can do whatever I can do to help my team out win for sure. So all these other crazy talks, back of my mind, don't really care. Definitely care about what's happening right now. I'm making my team win that chip. I definitely, I definitely understand that. I mean, I'm not as highly recruited as you, but I mean, I got some Division One, Division Two interest, stuff like that. And when you go on social media, Twitter, Instagram, whatever the case, and you see like coaches that are talking to you or schools that are talking to you and they're offering other people to like me personally, it's kind of like, like motivating because yeah. you feel like, like you feel like they're still basically sleeping on you. Like they're still showing you, showing you interest, showing you whatever amount of love that they're showing you. But they really, they obviously, like obviously you're not the priority, I guess mm-hmm. you could say in a sense, but yeah. I definitely agree. Like, for sure, I, I, I could definitely understand where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. What would you tell somebody that's, like, 
too worried about what level they're playing at or what level they're getting recruited to play at? Like, what would you tell somebody? Honestly, I would tell you just stop worrying and just worry about what's happening right now. Wherever, wherever you go, Juco, D1, D2, D3, it don't matter. Play as hard as you can every game. You, you can never know who's watching you for sure. Because that, when someone told me that statement, I didn't believe that at all about, oh, you can never know who's watching you. Until now, like, there's a bunch of D1 coaches watching me. Even from last year's, they even told me, oh, they watched my synergy highlights from last year, and I didn't even know. So definitely, it don't matter where you go, play hard, work hard, do what you need to do, and you'll get to the next level you want to in the future. For sure. That's definitely, I mean, I'm, I know a lot of people, people and athletes hear that, that same statement. You never know who's watching. You never know who's watching. My dad, coaches, everybody, people always used to tell me that, but I kind of didn't, like, I didn't really, the same as you, like, I never really, like, you don't want to hear that, like, but mm. until a situation occurs where, where that statement, you never know who's watching until something happens to where you realize, like, like, damn, like, you really do never know who's watching, like, you're not, most people aren't gonna, like, grasp that, so I think, like you said, if you can just, like, play every game, like, it's your last, take everything serious, play hard, and keep yeah. that same exact mindset. You never know who's watching. If you keep that mindset and just keep keep at it, don't quit, I think for sure you'll make it to wherever you're trying to go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How hard have you had to work to get to this point, like to build your game up, to build your name up, to be the man of everything, the student? How hard have you had to work to get to this point? Well, where I'm from, Toronto, it's not easy. Yeah, honestly, because there's a lot of violence, a lot of people doubting you, saying, oh, you're not going to make it, blah, blah, blah. And stuff like that really motivates me. It made me work twice as hard every day. Like when I get in the gym, while I'm doing my drills and stuff like that, and in the weight room, I got to work hard for sure, just to prove all of these guys around that ever doubted me. Like it was, it was a tough, like, tough road to get here, honestly, because I've been, been through a lot, honestly. So... Like, right now, I'm, I'm really glad that I'm at this stage right now, for sure. So, other than, like, the guy, the people that are, like, not believers or that have told you that you wouldn't make it, like, what's the, like, what's the biggest thing that motivates you to just keep going, to keep going hard, to keep pushing, to keep moving forward? Definitely got to see my family, my close friends, and definitely my beautiful girlfriend, for sure, because... My family, they mean a lot to me, honestly. What they've been through, my, my mom and dad, what they've been through when I was young, like taking care of five five boys, two me and five, taking care of all of us at once is very tough because I have one brother that's down here. When we were young, it was just us two. And then we had three other, three other brothers that were down back in where I was from, Ghana. So like for them, taking care of all five of us at once was definitely tough. So that really gave me the motivation to, you know, just show them that I really appreciate everything they've done for me. So I really want to make them proud for sure. I made my friends and my girlfriend proud for sure. I feel like that's anybody's, anybody that loves their parents for real, like genuinely, I think that's everybody's goal. Yeah. No what, what walk of life, you're a basketball player, football player, actor, doctor, whatever the case. Mm -hmm. I think that if you really love your parents, that's the main thing just to, try to help them, like, help pay them back, even though you'll never be able to pay a whatever dollar amount. There's never a dollar amount on what you could, like, to pay your parents back. But I think just wanting to help them out and support them, I think that's everybody's dream, really. Yeah, for sure. What are your future goals in regards to basketball? Like, what do you, what do you want to do this year coming up here at Santa Fe, our JUCO season? And what do you want to do in the future? Well, as of right now, definitely, I want, no matter what I have to do, I definitely want to lead my team to winning that conference finals, coming conference uh, championship and the state championship. Definitely average a good amount of points, rebounds for sure. Definitely prove these coaches wrong that have been looking at me and I'm saying, just proving everybody wrong and making sure in the near future that uh, I can just make it to the NBA. If not, the NBA go pro. And if none of that works out, definitely fulfill my dreams of like criminal criminology and stuff and become like a like a detective or something like that. Cause I really like that field. 
All right, now we're going to do the speed round. Just a couple more quick questions to wrap it up. Just tell me yeah. whatever you want to, whatever you got. All right, first question is, what's your favorite thing to do in your free time? Talk to my lovely baby, girlfriend. <laughs> I thought you were about to say playing 2K, man. Nah, man. It's whatever. Uh, who are your top five favorite rappers out right now? Top five, definitely Cosmo, Future, Shout out to my boy Doobie from where I'm from, um, Lil Uzi, and A Boogie. Solid. I'll give you that. That's five there. Solid. <laughs> um, what's your major like here at Santa Fe? Or what's going to be your major when you go on to your next university? I mean, I'm in uh, criminal justice uh, right now. So I'm definitely into like being a detective or working in that criminal analogy, like that type of work field. Mm-hmm. What is it like being so far from home and your loved ones? Um, it's it's tough, honestly, because plane rides two hours, drive twenty hours. It's really it's really tough because I here and there I get homesick and stuff like that, but I just got to do it and just do my thing. For sure. Uh, what bills are you rocking with on two K twenty one this year? Uh, right now I got a glass cleaner finisher. And um, a permanent lockdown. Those are, those are two bills that I'm messing with in 2K for sure. Tell these guys you're you're serious. You're no jokes. Tell them. Tell them you're real on 2K. Right. But them boys don't know about me, cause I'm y'all, young boy y'all. If you want smoke? Definitely. Talk to me. I don't move Hollywood. Just message me. I'll message you for sure. You can run that 2K anytime of the day. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it here first. Make sure. <laughs> Who's gonna win the NBA Finals yeah. here? Uh, no question. Lakers, come on. Like, definitely the Lakers. Lakers. For sure. I'm not a question, bro. Yo, next, bro. Next question. <laughs> All right, last question. If you could spend a day with three people dead or alive, who would they be and why? Um, Kobe Bryant, my girlfriend, and my family, for sure. Because Kobe Bryant... <laughs> When I was young, I've always wanted to meet him for sure. Like, before he died, like, I've always wanted to meet him because he's my idol. I just love, love the way he plays. I just wanted to meet him for sure and just ask him for a basketball advice. My girlfriend, I never get tired of just chilling with her every day. That's the love of my life for sure. I can say that, no doubt about it. And my family for sure. Definitely my family. They give me love and the laughter is all I need. Love them. Man, I was waiting on you to say Pop Smoke. R. P. Nah, Pop. I'll, 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 but yeah. R. P. Pop Smoke, man. R. P. Well, for sure. Um, that's gonna, that's it for the show. Um, thank you for yep. being on the show. Thank you for being a part of this. Tell everybody where they can find yeah, you. Yeah, many- Instagram, Twitter. Uh, okay, so where you can find me? Simple. Just type y'all. You can see me for sure. Young boy, y'all. Obey my son. Type y'all the baller on Twitter, type y'all the baller on Instagram, YouTube, type my name. You'll see my highlights and stuff. But if you got questions for me, honestly, DM me. I don't move Hollywood. I'm not like these type of people. Like, DM me for sure, and I'll message you back. I'm a lovely person to talk to, for sure. For, for sure. He's not, he not capping, for sure. Yeah. Tell, me, tell him your PSN, too. Anybody that wants smoke, tell him. All right. If you want smoke, I'm on the PS4. We don't do no Xbox, car. Play, PlayStation, PSN, Y'all Money, KD. You heard that? Y'all money KD. Not hard to spell. Not hard to say. You want smoke? Add that right now. Yes, sir. All right. That's it for the show. Again, thank you, bro, for being a part of this. No cap. See you on the next episode. Gang. Gang.